Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Hurricane. Welcome back to the Minnesota Gophers Dynasty. This is the shortened edited version of my offseason that was streamed last week. If you still wish to watch the longer live stream version, the two parts are on my channel. It's an hour and 20 of the offseason stuff and recapping the previous season, and then 40 minutes of just practice mode gameplay. I'll be condensing all of that into today's video as we get ready for Season 10, the final season in the Minnesota Gophers Dynasty. As there was no season recap, I did show some stats, and here are the numbers for our players in Season 9, as Matt Pierre was a key contributor on the offense, nearly 100 yards per game, he averaged 99.9. .9. We had a good first year as starting quarterback Tim Gallagher led the offense, and defensively we had a lot more players in their junior seasons continue to improve as we had Greg Kelly, Tony Hunter, Reggie Carter, and others play very, very effectively. We relied pretty heavily on those juniors and the seniors who are now graduating, a lot of them going on to the NFL draft. We had 12 seniors on the roster, so it's not as bad as it's been in recent years. However... We were graduating four offensive line starters, our starting running back Matt Pierre, there's our running offense graduating, and defensively our top two corners, three defensive ends, one of them was a starter, and middle linebacker Aaron Harrison who was a backup. The other graduate was another offensive lineman who wasn't a starter, but would have been very nice to have for this upcoming season. I'll get back to the roster situation here in a moment as we look at the All-Americans and you know we're going to be well represented on defense. Greg Kelly, Tony Hunter, Reggie Carter, along with Calvin Hall who almost went pro before season 9. And then you throw in our kicker Shane Wood and returner Eric Lemon. Second team All-Americans, there's Vincent Walker, our middle linebacker. And freshman, as we scroll down, there is Eric Lemon at safety. So... Defense is our strength. There's a lot of talent there. We have impact players at all three levels. Here was the Season 9 schedule, which got off to a great start, 6-0. But then we tripped up in overtime against Northwestern, lost a hard-fought game to Illinois in Week 11, and lost another overtime game to Purdue later in Week 14. It was a 10-3 year in Season 9, and we also won our bowl game against Alabama. Here are the other bowl results. We see that Iowa lost, along with UAB. We obviously played them in a non-conference game. The storyline there ties us together with Aaron Higdon and his transfer. He did not score a touchdown in that bowl game, and his season looked like this. Nearly 900 yards, a great average per carry, and he had six touchdowns. Michigan won their bowl game against Baylor, and Michigan State also won their bowl game against Kansas State. Nebraska didn't stand a chance against LSU as they put up 59 points. Illinois won their game against Army. And we see Clemson won the national championship against Penn State. We didn't play Penn State this season. But it appeared to be a great national championship, but Clemson edged them out with their dominant running game. And they are the champions heading into the 10th and final season of the Minnesota Gophers dynasty. So now it's time to get this roster prepared for the final year, and it starts with players leaving. This is the stage that had me nervous because of our talented juniors. We had 12 seniors graduate, and 5 juniors wanted to declare for the pro draft. There are a lot of starters right here. Three linebackers, Mike Moore has started, LaShawn Smith is a good safety, but I wanted to try keeping these guys around. We also had two players who wanted the transfer, so a lot went on here in this stage. I tried to convince these players to stay. I guaranteed them a conference championship. I know this team can be good next year if we can keep our roster intact. And so Reggie Carter was convinced to stay. Next up was Vincent Walker, middle linebacker. I tried the same exact thing. I'm guaranteeing conference titles to these players. He also accepted, and I did that for all five of those juniors, and they all stayed. That is very big for our defense. And then the two freshmen, including Andy Johnson, former top safety in the class. He was one of the first players to commit to us, and now he wants to transfer away after not getting much playing time. I tried to say he's going to play more this year, but ultimately he decided he wanted the transfer to Tulsa. I also let Derek Austin transfer to New Mexico State. Here are the draft results as six of our players were drafted. Joe Bennett was a first round pick and Matt Pierre was a third. 
We also had three seventh round draft picks and a fourth in Joe Preston. And going around the Big Ten, I wanted to see who basically we don't have to deal with anymore. Three juniors from Michigan went pro, including their first round tight end. Michigan State had four seniors go pro. Then Nebraska had five seniors go pro. One I'm very happy to see is Zach Henley, the senior being drafted. He was very good against us in that loss to Northwestern this past season. And then there's Ohio State who has this long list of players drafted. Followed by Penn State and their quarterback being drafted in the first round. Now it's time to build these rosters back up and get another class of recruits in. Heading into the offseason, I only had five commits. A couple of them were very impactful, including a top athlete. Number two outside linebacker Trey Young committed a while ago. He is only 226 pounds, and I expected him to have better speed with that build, but he's only a 78 speed. Still, though, he's a great run stopper. Juco transfer Terrence Butler is a 6'2", High-speed receiver with some big playability, but inconsistent hands. Michael Allen, an athlete, could play either running back or receiver. I think he's more of a wide receiver with his adequate route running. Jeremy Smith is a player who could play some running back or receiver as well. I think he's a better running back. And then wide receiver Jeremy McBride, who really isn't going to be a first-year impact type of player. But heading into this offseason, I wasn't really prepared to replace all of these offensive linemen. Five of our linemen were seniors, and you can only have so many linemen on the roster before you start taking away from depth at other positions. So we're kind of in a tough spot heading into this year, and I was looking at a lot of offensive linemen to potentially even play as true freshmen. That's where a lot of my points went. I looked at the board for more players to possibly scout, and there were a couple that caught my eye that were interested in us including strong safety Luke Handy, who was a gem prospect, a plus six overall. It said perhaps C speed. Instead, he's an 87, which is very good for a strong safety. Also found some duds. So there was a lot of scouting going on in here. It took quite a while as I was pretty diligent in my final stretch of recruiting. And I found a couple athletes I was interested in, but I thought it was too risky to dump points into them instead of electing to put points into the offensive linemen. There was also a five-star receiver I was interested in, Zach Lee, who was very similar to Terrence Butler, but I ultimately took him off the board because I thought that we needed to get more points into these other players. So it wasn't going to be a flashy final stage of recruiting, but I wanted to get those offensive linemen. So we head on to signing day, and here are the results. One of the players I wanted the most, Ernest Downing, the 10th rated center, he committed. Could not get some of these other players here on the board. You see Michigan State taking three of them, including halfback Steve Slaughter. And as you scroll down, you see Jerry Inman, a 76 overall guard, he committed. So as you can see, it definitely was more of a quality over quantity approach to this recruiting class because we needed that offensive line help but it also meant that we were going to have a lot more walk-ons on the roster. Strong safety Luke Handy, who was a very late find. He's actually a very good safety and a great replacement for Andy Johnson. And so we finished with 14 commits. Some of those guys were walk-ons, and it's only the 36 rated class. That wasn't ideal, but I did get my highest priorities. Some of these guys will have a chance to play very early. This is without training results, by the way, so the overalls will be higher as we move forward to training results, but it's clear our offensive line is not going to be as strong as it once was. I put top athlete Jeremy Smith at halfback and the number 31 athlete Michael Allen at wide receiver. I think both could contribute in their true freshman seasons. Now, here are the training results. We get a nice boost of 90-plus overalls on the roster, and most of those guys, as you notice, are on defense. The big concern was how much our offensive line would improve, and we'll get there in a moment as Tim Gallagher is boosted to a 92 overall. He received a pretty generous plus four to his throw accuracy. That's pretty big. At halfback, there's Chauncey Thornton and TJ Jackson, who will be the top two guys moving forward. Fullback Trey Grigsby is now an 80 overall. Here is the wide receiver situation. It's looking pretty good. Nice plus two in speed to already fast Brandon Jones. Offensive line, Zach Turner, our best guy, is an 89 overall. Then there's the redshirt freshman Anthony Lewis, redshirt junior Tate Barnes. 
At right guard, we have Andrew Peterson going to a 78 and J.J. Lester to a 78. So I'm going to have to scheme around this offensive line not being as strong as we're used to. It's going to have an impact on both the pass and run game. Defensively, our situation is a lot better, and I'm very excited to see what Ricky Jack can do as a starter. He's 235 pounds. He has good speed, but he's more than a speed rusher. He's very strong with high power moves and high block shed, and then he's going to start alongside Greg Kelly, our two defensive tackles who return, our great linebackers. That front seven is even better this year, and I can't wait. In the secondary, we replace a couple guys, and we're loaded at safety. I need to find a way to get these safeties on the field. Two is not going to be enough. And I'll talk to you guys about that more once we get to practice mode and what my plan is going to be there. But I'm really excited to see this defense take shape because I think a lot of talented players are going to have increased roles this year and this defense could be even better if everything comes together like I think it will. One thing that definitely helps is that Calvin Hall did not go pro after he tried or he wanted to before season nine, he wants to keep sticking around. And he's gonna be a first round pick most likely by the end of his college career. And he's just one of many potential pro prospects on this defense. And here was something funny I found. Out of returning players, the fourth highest in pass blocking was Vincent Walker. But don't expect to see him at guard. It's gonna to have to get pretty bad before that happens. Then I had to cut one player. We had a 71-man roster. I decided to cut John Preston, the 50-overall defensive tackle, leaving us with 45-overall David George, a linebacker. He was quite popular in the chat. Moving on to our schedule for Season 10, this is what it's going to be. We're going to open at home against number 17 TCU, then travel for another game against UAB, Following that, we start our Big Ten schedule and take on number one Clemson, the defending champs, in week eight. And now we're going to move on to practice, and I'm not going to, like, play-by-play -play commentate this stuff, but this is a chance to see the Season 10 roster in action. I started with our starters in the game, and then I had some backups in as we moved on. But what I wanted to talk about during this practice gameplay was basically my plans for the offense and defense this season. Offensively, we've had significant turnover two straight years. After season eight, it was Andy McKenzie and our receivers graduating. Fast forward a year and it's Matt Pierre and our offensive linemen graduating. So from season eight to season 10, the offense is significantly different. And what we're going to do this season on offense is largely going to depend on the offensive line. We had five seniors graduate, like I mentioned before, and four of those guys were starters. They were a big reason why Matt Pierre had 1,299 yards. Pierre was very good at making players miss in the open field, but he got into the open field because the offensive line was very good at run blocking. What's going to happen this year? Well, there are some running plays you can see in this practice, and it's certainly not as good as we're used to. Although we are up against, obviously, a very good defense. We're up against a very good front seven and a dominant offensive line with run-stopping linebackers. So it's a great test to see what our offense is capable of. I'm confident in Tim Gallagher and our core of passing targets that have developed. Marcus Williams at tight end is the most reliable. And then a wide receiver, we have Nick Wilkerson, Clint Porter, and Lee James. I do think you're going to see a lot more three receiver, one tight end formations to keep our best four passing targets on the field. And by the way, here is that backup linebacker, David George, making a couple plays. Then I threw it right at him here with Gallagher, and he shows off the hands. But back to what I was talking about. I also want to get Brandon Jones on the field a bit because of that speed. He can stretch the field and provide a big play element. And he may also be our kick and punt returner. I think that we're going to be best off trying to keep defenses from stacking the box against their offensive line. So you'll see us spread the field quite a bit and likely use our running backs more in the passing game because of the concerns with the offensive line. I'm always going to try to run the football as well, but if we're not doing that effectively, we'll probably have to try some more option stuff or just use our running backs more in the passing game. I'll have to adapt that based on the play of our offensive line. 
A couple more players I'd like to involve more, but it might be difficult, are fullback Trey Grigsby. As you see this ridiculous play that we had in practice, he had great hands going down the field, and he has good speed for a fullback. I like to involve him somehow, and there's also tight end Michael Williams, who's a very, very good blocker. But when I want to spread the field with three receivers plus Marcus Williams, it's hard to find roles for Grigsby and Michael Williams. So they might not be used as much as I like. We'll have to see how things play out. But you're going to see a lot of spread. Maybe not much diamond here as it wasn't very effective for us, despite being a trademark for a long time in the offense. And if the offensive line doesn't block very effectively, you see a lot of short passes and us trying to adjust the offense to get more yards after the catch. I think we have some guys who can do that, and it might be the best thing for the offense. At receiver now, by the way, are Juco transfer Terrence Butler and 6'7 wide receiver Diedrich Sullivan. I wanted to see what he could do down the field. And the rest of this is actually all red zone, which is something that was requested in the chat during the stream, and it's actually a very good thing to practice. I don't usually put us inside the 10 and try to score touchdowns, but it's a really good idea just to see what type of things our offense does well in the red zone and what players need to be focused on. So I'm very happy I spent some time in the red zone here. But I want to talk about defense now. Thankfully, we return a lot of our key players. The front seven is largely intact, but the big turnover is on defense, replacing Joe Bennett and Joe Preston. So how do we make up for those cornerback losses and still utilize all of the safeties we have? The big change is going to be moving Eric Lemon from free safety to cornerback. Now right now, I'm thinking he could play nickel corner, but also at 6'2", I'm not putting outside corner out of the question. He has ball skills, speed, great coverage ability. I want to find the best home for him and also find where I can use our other two corners that are slotted to start. If we play Eric Lemon at cornerback, that opens up free safety opportunities for Mike Moore and LaShawn Smith to find out who's going to be the starter. Strong safety is still going to be Calvin Hall. I do believe we're going to be well equipped to play man-to-man -man defense, but I don't expect to play a lot of too deep cover two. I would like to play a lot of robber coverage and let Calvin Hall patrol the middle of the field and make plays when quarterbacks think they have an opening. It will maybe perhaps open up a chance for opposing offenses to beat us deep, but they're going to have to beat some very good secondary players to even have a chance. And that's also going to require them to protect their quarterback to have the time to throw it deep. I don't think we're going to have to blitz very often, but on third down you still will see probably some different blitz ideas that I want to throw out there. I let Eric Lemon be our kick and punt returner last year, but you're not going to see that most likely. I like to have Brandon Jones because he's very fast. I think he can be a great returner, and I don't want to have an important secondary player like Eric Lemon having those extra touches and hits in the return game. So I'm much more confident putting Brandon Jones out there or another uh, fast depth player, but I think Jones is our best bet although I liked what Lemon did last year. He was also an All-American returner. So with that, that's going to wrap this up. Those are my plans on offense and defense this year. You have to see some new faces on both sides of the ball, but there are also some other players who may have a chance to have some playing time that you didn't get a great in-depth view in this practice. Let me know what you think of this team heading into Season 10. Leave your season predictions down below in the comment section. And I'll see you guys when Season 10 kicks off as Minnesota will host TCU, a very good non-conference matchup to start off Season 10. Thank you all for watching. Leave your feedback down below in the comment section. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you have not done so already. I will see you guys next time. Have a great day.